In this video, we're going to look at estimating with differentials. Before we get into what a differential is and how that plays into what we're doing for this problem, let's look at our problem. So the prompt tells us that there's a law that states that the volume of blood flowing through an artery in a unit of time at a fixed pressure is directly proportional to the fourth power of the radius of the artery. So that's how we get this formula here that we're going to be dealing with for our problem. And then R is represented by the radius of the artery, and V represents volume. Okay? So then we have two questions within this same prompt. So the first question asks us, if radius is increased by about 8%, by about how much will volume of blood flowing through the artery increase? Okay? And then the second question asks us, by about how much must the radius of the artery be increased to achieve a 40% increase in volume of blood flowing through artery? So this one deals with radius being increased by 8%, and the second question deals with a 40% increase in volume, and we want to know how to obtain that by how much the radius must be increased of the artery. So now that we've laid out the problem prompt for us, Let's go ahead and ask ourselves, well, what the heck even is a differential, okay? So let's look at the, the original way that we write derivatives, right? We use dy over dx to associate with this being a derivative, right? So it's the derivative of y, actually, with respect to x, okay? So that's what we have going on there. So together, this dy dx signifies this but separately, they also have a meaning individually, and they're called differentials. So what a differential is, is it provides us with a way of estimating the amount a function changes as a result of a small change in input values, okay? So what this means is that in this case, dy and dx, both individually, are differentials, and what these represent are changes in y or x, respectively, okay? So dy represents a change in y, and dx represents a change in x. So then we ask ourselves, well, how can we use this in this context, okay? Well, let's do a quick little suppose. Suppose y equals f of x is differentiable, okay? So what this means is that we have that y prime equals f prime of x, and then we already said that f prime of x, the derivative of y, can be represented as dy over dx, right? This is the form that we have for saying a derivative function. But then what happens if we multiply both sides of this function by dx? It cancels, it divides away over there, but then what we're left with is dy equals f prime of x times dx. So we have this differential, this differential, times the derivative of our original function, right? So that's what we have going on here, and that's how those two relate. This way of writing the derivative function is equivalent to this differential form. So this is derivative form, and this is differential form. And like we said, differentials are used to estimate the amount a function changes as a result of changes in these input values. So as we work through this problem, this dy equals f prime of x times dx is going to be the form that we're more focused on in our question. But now let's ask ourselves, we've told ourselves, okay, they represent change in y, change in x, fine, but how do we incorporate the percents into this? So let's take a little trip back down memory lane and do a little bit more of a review for this type of concept. Do we remember the terms? It, it's going to pop up, not necessarily maybe from math, but maybe other science courses that you've taken, but the difference between absolute change and the difference between that and relative change. They're both different kinds of changes, so you're asking, okay, well, maybe one of them is used in this case, one of them is used in other cases because we talked about change in y and change in x. That's actually not the case. So absolute change is just the actual raw difference between two values. So if we had one volume and another volume and we subtracted them, that would give us our absolute change. What a relative change does is it incorporates the absolute change, but it divides it by the original value that we have and then multiplies it times 100. 
So essentially what relative change does is gives us a percent. Okay, so then how do these two relate? So when we have absolute change, if we want to divide absolute change by our original value and then multiply it by 100, we'd get the relative change, right? It would become a percent just like we have within relative change. Well, as we look back in our questions that we're dealing with in this problem, we're dealing with percents, right? So what we have here is we can look at the absolute change in the comparison of those percents of the radius and of the uh, volume of blood flowing through the artery, but we're actually going to need to incorporate relative change into our calculations to figure out our answer to these problems. So what I mean is, in this case we're looking at if radius is increased by about 8%, when we normally look at the radius of an artery, we assume, okay, that's at 100% extension capacity, whatever you kind of want to call this, but that, equi that equates to being just one, right? Because when we convert 100% to a decimal, we move the decimal over two times to the left, so we get one, but then we're wanting to increase this radius by about 8%. So that means that the second radius is at 108% or 1.08. So what we have here is we have 1.08 minus 1, or an absolute change of 0.08, right, in our decimal representation. If we want to represent this as a percent, like we have here, we would simply divide this by our original value, which was 1, right, 100% evaluates to 1, then we multiply this by 100 to give us the 8%. So we need to keep this type of strategy that we just used here in mind when we're trying to find our answer to the problem because the answers inside of web work want it to be incorporated into a percent notation. So we've got to keep that in mind as we're working through this problem. And the same type of thing can be said for this question where we go from 100% volume of blood flowing through the artery to like 140%. So what this will look like is 1.4 minus one over one times 100 or 0.4 times 100, which gives us the 40% that comes from the 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 prompt of the question. Okay, so now that we've done a lot of background work with this question, let's actually get into doing the work for the problem. Okay, and what I mean by that is we need to figure out what the differential form of our original function is and in, and in ways to incorporate these different differentials that we've been talking about. So what we need is a change in y, the derivative of our original function, and the change in x. So let's go about finding the derivative of our given function. And our function was given to us as volume equals k times r to the fourth. All right. So if we were to derive volume in terms of radius, so if we're taking dv over dr, what we're going to get is this is going to be our function's derivative in terms of radius. Right? We're going to derive volume with respect to radius. So what we're going to get is we're going to use the power rule on this. So we have 4 times kr cubed. Now this k here, what this actually is, is just any regular constant. When it talked about the setup of the law here, and it said that it's directly proportional to the fourth power of the raised to the artery, this k is what's called a constant of proportionality. And since it's a constant, and it's being multiplied times what we're deriving to, we can use the constant multiple rule to do k times the derivative with respect to r of r to the fourth. We can use that constant multiple rule to ignore it, and then we find 4r cubed as our derivative in here, and then all we do is we're bringing, back, we're bringing k back into this mix in this nature. So our derivative is going to look like this, but then just like we translated our derivative from derivative form to differential form, we're going to multiply dr to both sides. Okay, so what we get here is dv equals 4k r cubed times dr. And this is our differential form for our equation that we were given. Okay, so now that we have that squared away, let's look at how we need to incorporate the different changes that we talked about and how to actually solve these questions that we've been posed. So let's look at our first question inside of this prompt first. So we were talking about if radius is increased by about 8%, by about how much will the volume of the blood flowing through the artery increase? So when we talked about 
the different changes inside of this question, how the 8% was going to be a relative change, and this 0.08 is actually going to be an absolute change, we're going to incorporate more of this absolute change inside of our work to obtain a relative change answer for our volume. It sounds kind of confusing, but we're going to work through it and we'll kind of see how that, how that comes to fruition. So if we scroll over here where we have a little bit more room and we kind of incorporate what we found to be our differential form in here, we remind ourselves that the differential is dv equals 4kr cubed times dr. Okay, so let's write that down so we have that for us. So dv equals 4kr cubed times dr. Now, what this dv and this dr signify are actually the absolute change of what we are incorporating into our question, first of all. So this decimal difference here, this 0.08 is our dr. And then in this case, 1.4 minus 1 gives us 0.4. This is our dv. And this dv here is going to come in handy in the second part of the problem that we do. But this 0.08 is going to help us right now. So now that we've established the different values for our absolute changes when we talk about absolute change of radius and absolute change of volume, what I want to actually do is manipulate this differential equation that we have here to help us to figure out what our relative change is in terms of volume and radius. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is divide by volume on both sides. Now, it's going to look a little bit different on each side of what I'm actually dividing by, but when I leave the left side alone, this, derivative, this change in volume over volume is exactly what relative change is, right? The, we talked about how dv is 0.4 divided by our original volume was 100%, right? Of the blood flowing through the artery was at a good constant rate. We assumed it to be just 100%. So when we divide the change in volume over volume, we've got a small piece of the relative change of volume here, and all we're going to have to do later is multiply this by 100 when it comes to that point. Okay, But what I'm going to actually do on this right side, instead of just dividing by V, I'm actually going to plug in our formula for volume, which was Kr to the fourth. And now the reason for that is, once we simplify this a little bit, since this up top here is a product of terms, and on the bottom is a product of terms, I can divide things away piece by piece. So the k's divide away, and then we have three r's and four r's, so our left on the bottom is one r. So what we're going to get is this. We have four times dr over r, right? And so now that we have this form of our differential set up for us, it makes both of these questions very easy to solve individually. Because what is this dv over v? what we talked about is being the relative change of our volume. Similarly for this dr over r is the relative change of our radius. So when we're talking about the radius being increased by about 8%, that means that the relative change of our radius is going to be represented as 4 times 8%, right? And so actually what we're going to end up doing is to multiply these two numbers here together because it's going to help us solve for the relative change of our volume. We're going to turn 8% into a decimal so we can carry out this multiplication. So we get 0.32. And so this is the decimal notation of our relative change of our volume. But in order to fully get into relative change form, we're going to multiply this by 100 to give us a percent. So that means our change in volume becomes 32% here. And we're going to use the same form of the differential here to figure out by about how much the radius of the artery must be increased to achieve a 40% increase in volume of blood flowing through the artery. So in the first little bit that we did here, this part, we changed dr over r to 8%. Here what we're evaluating is something changing dv over v, which what we want our ideal value is 40% here, equals 4. And we got to figure out what the percent change of the radius is, which is what we represent here, to obtain this result. So just like last time, instead of writing 40%, for our sake of doing the division, we're going to change that to a decimal, so we get 0.4. But if we divide 0.4 by 4, we get 0.1 equals dr over r. And again, to represent this as a percent, we multiply it by 100 and just move that decimal back. So we get 
equals the relative change in radius to achieve the 40% increase in the volume of the blood flowing through the artery that we want.